discussion for experiment one. In um, this experiment is qualitative analysis of cations, group three groups in major groups that are chloride groups, sulfide groups, and the soluble groups. So we, uh, first step is we want to understand about writing ionic equation, uh, which means that we can differentiate between a precipitate and an aqueous solution um, of a compound that is soluble in, in, uh, in water or a compound that will precipitate under different conditions. So in general, uh, what happens when we have mixture of few cations, the general steps are we need to um, selectively precipitate but since we cannot precipitate only one cation at the time, we, we precipitate two or three cations at the time. Then after we precipitate, we have to separate them, each one, one at the time, again, selectively precipitate, selectively dissolve, uh, re-dissolve the, the sample, and then uh, confirm the presence or absence of one of those and each of those uh, those. Ions. So we are going to start with uh, writing ionic equation. How do you write um, an equation? In general, you have your molecular formula for the compound one. In this case, is the silver nitrate. So we have molecular formula for silver nitrate. And when we say AQ, that means this compound is soluble in water. HCl, AQ means that hydrochloric acid, soluble in water, yields, the arrow separates the reactants from the product, yields um, AgClS, that means this compound is not soluble in water, it will precipitate. And HNO3, which again is AQ, uh, using solubility table, you can determine if which one is AQ, which one is not. But when you're writing ionic equation, you can only, break the compounds that are uh, soluble in water uh, or they are designated as the AQ into their ions because they dissociate in water and they will generate ions. So if you go from this molecular equation to uh, a um, ionic equation or complete ionic equation, I break only the ones that they are designated AQ. So silver, nitrate, we change to silver ion, and then nitrate ion. So nitrate is a one minus charge, silver is a one plus charge, it cancels. So basically, when I write the formula for silver nitrate, I switch the charges. When I dissociate, I get the, give the charges back to the metal and then the polyatomic ion. HCl, when you dissociate HCl in water, it would change to H plus and Cl minus. If it's an AQ, that means that you have added water to HCl. So that's what's happening here. We have an H plus and then Cl minus. When you are going from molecular equation, which we have here, into a complete ionic equation, we break down only aqueous or any compound that is designated as aqueous. And I said that before, uh, but if anything is designated with solid, if it's solid, if it's liquid or if it's gas, you cannot separate them into their ions and they are going to remain the way they are. So AgCl solid is going to stay, but uh, nitric acid, because it's an AQ, it would dissociate to um, hydrogen ion and then nitrate ion. So we have complete ionic equation. So this is the ionic equation. This one is molecular equation. equation. And when you start from ionic equation or complete ionic equation, and you cancel the spectator ions, what is considered as spectator ion? The ion that appears exactly the same way on the reactant side and the product side is called the spectator ions. So nitrate is a spectator ion here. We can uh, cross nitrate from both sides of the equation. The arrow sign here separates the reactants from the product. H plus is a spectator because it appears exactly the same way on both sides of the equation. 
When you cancel the, the spectator ions, then you end up with Ag plus um, silver ion plus the chloride ion that gives silver chloride precipitate. This is known as net ionic equation. So now we have the net ionic equation. So this is the net ionic. Molecular, we start with the molecular, then we go to ionic equation from ionic equation or complete ionic equation. Then we go to the net ionic equation. So these are the, the three steps. What's responsible for evidence of reaction is the, the net ionic equation. So this means if you have a, um, a solution that contains silver ion and you add HCl to it, a precipitate with forms, which is a solid compound and actually happens to be a white color. So it's a white color precipitate that will, um, that will happen then. What type of compounds are expected to dissolve in general um, when you're writing the equation? It's, uh, it's, if you know these shortcuts, it's going to make it easier for you. So substances which are dissociated in, in, in the ionic equation are strong acids and bases. That means these compounds are soluble in water. So if you have uh, HCl, if you have HNO3, if you have H2SO4, if you have HBr, these are going to, so these are examples of strong acids and they will dissociate in the aqueous solution. So when you are writing the ionic equation, you break it down. A strong bases, hydroxide of group uh, 1A, these are examples, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, these are also, um, they dissociate in the, in the uh, aqueous solution. All water-soluble ionic compounds. So if we know a compound NaCl, based on the solubility rule, any compound that contains group 1A, it would be soluble in water. So this is a soluble ionic compound. It will dissociate 100%. There are some substances that they would dissociate, but they would only dissociate like partially. And uh, partial dissociation, if you have weak acid, like if you have acetic acid, CH3COOH, when it dissociates, it actually reaches equilibrium. When you add water to it, in aqueous solution, it will give you acetate ion plus hydrogen ion, but this reaches equilibrium. That means only limited amount of the, the acidic acid would dissociate and majority of it will stay in the, in the molecular form. And to show that exact concept that only partially would dissociate, you can change the size of the arrow also. So the longer the arrow going to the, uh, to the reactant side, that means that majority of the sample is going to stay in the acid form and some of it, um, it would change to the acetate ion and the hydrogen ion. All partially soluble ionic compounds, like if you have a copper hydroxide that is going to part be partially uh, soluble, it will give few ions and main part would stay as the, um, as the molecular form. But the compounds that they do not dissociate, they said all covalent substances. So if you have, if you have carbon tetrachloride, you're not going to draw, uh, break this or dissociate this to ions because it's a molecular compound. If you have glucose, C6H12O6, if you have H2O liquid, this is not going to dissociate when you are writing ionic equation, unless you have like a strong acid that would give uh, hydrogen ion, or if you have a strong base that gives you hydroxide ion. All solids and precipitates. So if you have like a silver chloride, if you have, this is going to stay solid form. If you have, uh, uh, let's say a lead iodide is going to stay solid. So any compound that is not. Uh, if you have liquid like this, it's going to stay. Water is liquid, is not going to dissociate. Uh, 
all gas molecules, they are going to stay in molecular form. So if you, if you get a product of um, CO2, it's going to stay as a CO2 gas. So if you have solid, liquid, or gas, you don't break it down into their ions. You would just keep it as their molecular, uh, molecular form. Uh, 